when I see someone else living the life that they were destined to live, although I may never tell them, they will probably never know, seeing them living their authentic life is what tells my unconscious mind, hey dude, it's okay if you actually live your authentic life too. Herzlich willkommen bei Greater. Wir haben heute wieder einen ganz besonderen Gast. Er war schon häufiger bei uns zu Gast im Interview, im Studio, aber auch auf unseren Bühnen, unter anderem World, beim World Leadership Summit mit Barack Obama oder beim Greater Festival im Sommer 2022. Ich freue mich immer, wenn er da ist, denn er ist für mich einer der inspirierendsten Menschen, die ich die letzten Jahre kennenlernen konnte. Er hat neben dem Café am Rande der Welt den Bestseller geschrieben, die Big Five for Life. Ein Konzept, wie man ein glückliches, erfolgreiches Leben führen kann, wie man eine eigene Vision für sein Leben, seine Big Five for Life kreiert und ich bin stolz und sehr, sehr glücklich, dass wir gemeinsam zusammenarbeiten, um dieses Konzept, die Idee des Big Five for Life möglichst viel in die Welt zu bringen und Menschen auszubilden, selbst die Big Five for Life für ihr eigenes Leben zu entwickeln, aber auch andere Menschen anzuleiten, das Konzept der Big Five for Life zu entwickeln. Ich freue mich, dass er da ist, dass wir gemeinsam über die Big Five for Life, über das Konzept, über seine Big Five for Life sprechen ähm, und über unser gemeinsames Coaching-Programm. Schön, dass er da ist, John Strelecki. Thank you so much. So great to be here. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, same here. And uh, today we want to talk about the Big Five for Life. Yeah. So what is that concept about? I know that you inspired millions of people already around the world, especially in Germany with that concept. Um, what is it about? Yeah, it's uh, actually something that came to me. I left everything behind in my early 30s, backpacked around the world. And one of the places I went was Africa. And when I was there, I noticed that people would talk about what was called the African Big Five for life or the African Five. And uh, when I came back from that experience, I had this moment uh, afterwards where I thought, wow, what if we were to think about the five things that we most want to do, see, or experience in our life? And then we were to align all of our energies, all of our time, all of our resources towards those five things. Like what would our life look like with that level of focus? And uh, as you said, it's been something that is really connected with people. I think in part because there are so many distractions in our everyday life, potentially. And so with a million distractions, being able to have that level of focus makes life a lot easier. And I think that's one of the reasons that it connects with people. Yeah, it's interesting. If I talk to people, if I ask them, what are your big five for life? Or even if I ask the question like, what is your vision? What are your goals? What is something you want to achieve? Or what are areas in life you want to change? Yeah. Often the people cannot answer these questions. Yeah, I mean, I went through, gosh, how many years, decades of schooling. And while you learn wonderful things in school, I never had anybody ask me, what is even one thing that you most want to do, see or experience in your life before you die? So that you could be like, this was an awesome life. You know? and, and that it could be, you know, going to Cambodia and seeing Angkor Wat. It could be, I want to start a career as an entrepreneur, whatever anybody's thing is. It just isn't something that is talked about typically in our everyday lives. And that, again, I think it's why people gravitate towards it, because when they hear it, they say, this actually makes perfect sense. Why would I not do this? I even made the experience that the people don't allow themselves to ask these kind of questions like, who am I that I should not dream about these yeah. big things or achieve something special? Did you make similar experience? Yeah, it's kind of sad, actually, in that Uh, sometimes we are overwhelmed with those self-doubts. And so, yeah, who am I to? Or I'll, I'll just probably mess this up. Or, yeah, I'm just not good at that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a tragedy. And I've gone through that myself. I've lived through those moments, those times, especially when I was younger, struggling to find my way, struggling to find my place in the cosmic you know, algorithm. Uh, but the truth is that everybody has genius to offer. And if we allow ourselves to release that genius, amazing things happen. Because when I see you being authentic and living a life that makes you glow, then it inspires me that I could do that too. And uh, so, yeah, no, I, I love the work. I love to see people transform. Because there's nothing more, and I've been there, uh, but there's nothing more sad than that place of like, I have no idea what I want to do with my life. The clock is ticking. Um, the, the everyday stress is so much for me. Like, that's horrible. I've been there. It's horrible. 
So what happened at that time? How many years is that ago that you developed that concept and started to living it for, for yourself, for your own life? Yeah, it's over two decades now. Yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today had it not dawned on me and had I not been able to implement so much of that. You know, as a perfect example, the concept of who versus how. This is one of the key essences of the Big Five for Life. So much of my life, I thought, oh, how do I do this? How do I do it? Anytime I was trying to move from point A to point B, it was always that question, how? But the truth is that if you find someone who's already moved from point A to point B and you learn what they do, like, yeah, mm -hmm. your life is a heck of a lot easier. And uh, so that single, what seems like a very easy to implement because it is concept, is life changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I personally also worked a lot with visions and, and working on the visions and, and try to, well, not try, really implementing them in life and I really experience miracles. Yeah. Uh, maybe we have some, some time later on to, maybe to talk also about these, but. Yeah. Um, so um, can you give us some, some examples? So 20 years ago, you sit down at a table, you develop these five for lives and how many did you already achieved or do you always update them or can you give us some more ideas how it works? Yeah, sometimes yeah. one of them would be something that's shorter term in nature. So you may say, I want to go experience Africa and okay, well, what would that look like? Well, I wanna experience safari. I wanna see the animals while I'm there and something else might be longer term in nature. Um, I know we both have kids. You might say, I wanna have a loving relationship with my kids. The wonderful thing about having them is that when you wake up in the morning and you look at your list, then you look at the way you plan on spending your day and you say, well, if I actually do the things that I'm planning on doing today, will I be fulfilling these five things or any of these five things that I have decided are the most important things for me? So it's like a, an incredibly easy way, again, to stay focused, to put out the stuff that's not there and to make sure you're living the life that you wanna live. So yeah, I've done many, many of my big five for life, especially the ones that are the one and dones. So I've traveled the world, I've seen different places. And the one that is most near and dear to my heart is a longer one, which is to have a loving relationship with the people that matter the most to me. So some of them, the, 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 the one hit things, so you replace them then with new, did you always have five? Or is, yeah. it, is it that, that, uh, that concrete that you always have five and you follow especially these five? Yeah, great question. It depends on the person. So my recommendation is to always keep five running because you find these incredible and beautiful interactions between the different ones. And so if you have five, you have a better chance for more interactions. But that said, it's entirely up to someone's personality. If they say, I wanna go one, two, three, four, five, clean the slate and start with a new five, that's, that's up to them. Yeah, so I mean, you have, how many books did you sell? Millions of that Big Five for Life book. Yeah. Or I'm not only, I'm not talking about the uh, Café, uh, Café am Rande der Welt, the German yeah. title, you even sold many, many million yeah. copies, copies more. Um, like what kind of stories, what kind of feedbacks do you get from, from, your, from your readers? Uh, what are the maybe most exciting uh, Big Five for Life that people uh, developed or worked on? Yeah, it's, it's just amazing the outpouring that people give when they come across this and then they implement it in their life. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you one that is more of a super fun one and then I'll tell you one that is like super emotional that I treasure to this day. Uh, on the super fun side, it's very often around things like travel. And so I have a great picture in my archive of a woman who said, I've always wanted to learn Spanish And when I, I figured that out, when I looked through my big five for life, it's a dream that I'd had kind of buried behind me. I hadn't thought about it in a while. I went through the process of discovering my big five for life, realized that was it. So I've got this great picture of her on a beach in Costa Rica where she was studying Spanish and surfing. And crazy cool is that I was at that exact same beach doing the exact same things a couple of years before that. And we had not talked about that. So it's like, we just had that same amazing experience. Wow. So very often it's around travel. A lot of times it's around uh, moving someone's life in a different direction. So entrepreneurialism. You know, a lot of people are trapped within a system where they feel, oh, I'm just showing up nine to five, but in their heart of hearts, what they really want to do is to control their own destiny. And so mm -hmm. freedom is usually the way it starts. They define that. And when they dig in a little bit, they're like, I really want to kind of be my own boss. I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are some sort of high level examples as, as an example of the high level with the, the be your own boss. I remember distinctly this one that she has invited me to her bakery because she has opened a bakery that just looks so freaking amazing. And uh, so I can't wait to go. Uh, that one's in the Netherlands. Uh, on a more emotional perspective, I would say one of the most powerful stories I ever heard was I, I was standing in line, I was doing a book signing uh, and some, tons of people in line waiting. 
And a man came up to me and he slid his copy of The Big Five for Life on the table and he asked me if I would sign it. And I was like, sure, absolutely. And I said, how did you hear about the book? And with tears in his eyes, he said, my best friend gave it to me. And you could tell he was emotional, you know. And I said, oh, please thank him for me because that is the highest compliment possible for an author. And I said, what inspired him to give it to you? And he said, because I told him that I was going to take my life. And this man went on to tell me this like, unbelievable story. He had five kids, but he was losing his business and he felt like such a failure. And he confided in that to his best friend. And his friend said, before you do anything else, I need you to read this. And so here was this man a year later sliding this book across the table and telling me like, I'm here because of this story and the way it helped me look at my life and my role differently. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, that, again, that's what I love about this, right? This is a relatively simple concept for someone who wants to discover their big five for life. The process is beautiful. It's easier than you would think. And so we can have really down moments in life when we don't realize how close we are to connecting with the life we really want. Yeah, and the book is really also a lot about uh, companies and company yeah. cultures. Why do you have such a big connection between the concept and company cultures? I've always believed that the leaders are in a very unique position to have a positive or negative impact on thousands, hundreds of thousands of people because they set the bar, they set the standard, they set the example. And so when I was, when the idea for this book came to me, uh, I thought to myself, what if I could inspire amazing leaders who would then inspire all the people who work for them and then those people would inspire all the people who live with them and the ripple effect could be dramatic and it really has been. Um, there's some amazing pictures I have of companies that have implemented the Big Five for Life and all the employees know their Big Five for Life. The jobs are aligned with it. It's, it's something super special. Can you give examples where the connection is between the Big Five for Life of people and, and, and company cultures? Because, I mean, yeah. usually that, that's quite separated in, in daily life, usually. Yeah, the, which the is a travesty, for people right? and companies. Uh, because it's actually quite simple if uh, using Greater as a perfect example. And so if someone said, I'm super passionate about helping people live an extraordinary life. Like I'm one of those people come to for advice. I'm one of those people that is really thinking about the bigger questions in life. And I also have a skill set as a graphic designer or as a marketer. Then why not work for a company like Greater whose passion and purpose is around helping people elevate their game, elevate their life. And so I constantly go back to this, that whatever you love to do, If you allow yourself to find a job where doing that, you can get paid to live your big five for life, you win, the company wins, the client wins. It's just quite a bit easier than we think. The environment is another great one. Like if you're passionate about green space, the environment, why not get a job in a company that that is their thing? You know? yeah. So I know that over the last years you were invited by many companies, you have done uh, uncountable uh, speeches on events and conferences about the concept about living the big five for life. Yeah. I know that you already educated some trainers who are going in companies and coaching people on the big five for life doing seminars and Uh, we also start a, a project, maybe we find some time later on to, to give more details on that. When did it start? Was it by accident that the people are asking for, give us some advice? Or how did the movement to develop Big Five, uh, uh, how, did, how did, it, that, did it start? Yeah, it started because people were reading the Big Five for Life book. They were reading Das Café on Rana Develt, and they were saying, this connects with me. This resonates with me. What they were struggling with was the way to actually implement it in their life. So yeah, I was getting so many requests from people saying, can you help me figure out my big five for life? And I didn't have a process. I mean, I had written the book, it was inside of my head. Uh, so I got so many requests over time that I finally said, I'm gonna trust my intuition in the same way that I write. And I sat down over the course of 30 days and had a really powerful experience of coming up with questions that I could ask people that would move information from their unconscious mind to their conscious mind. Uh, because here's the thing, Alex, every single person who's ever gone through the Big Five for Life discovery experience, the day they walk in, the first day of the online course, they actually already know their Big Five for Life. It's just buried mm. so deep within them. And so these questions that the course asks, the goal is just to move those layers off, the have tos, the can'ts, the musts. And what's beautiful is over each of the exercises, That pathway opens, and by the time it's done, they are 100% clear on what they really want to do with their life. Yeah, so it's, it all started with fans, to answer your question. So 
What is your experience when the people know? Because, I mean, it's already a hard part to discover your big five for life. It sounds like easy, but if you really question yourself, what is really making you happy? And usually it's not like a big bank account or something like that. It's more right. the, the underlayer, what, what is really making you happy. So right. what would you do with more money, for example? Like exactly. what, what would change in life? So one hard thing is, of course, to discover the big five life. Maybe you can give us some ideas why it's harder than you think. But I think the most, the even more exciting question is for me, like, what are the usual things which are holding the people back to really live it? Mm. Yeah, I would say the two things go hand in hand, to be honest with you. And so what keeps someone from asking the question, what are my big five for life? It's probably a lack of awareness that it's easier than they think. And so we can create these walls, these barriers in our mind that says, oh, this is going to be so complex. And if it's super complex, I just don't have the energy for it. I've got so many other things going on in my life. And so it's a false reality. Uh, the truth is that it's, it's a beautiful process. It's actually quite fast to discover your big five for life with the right guidance. And so that false belief, I think, often holds people back. And mm -hmm. a same set of, or at least related false beliefs, keeps them from implementing it, which is, Who am I to, you know? I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. I'll probably fail at it. That negative self-talk is one of the worst things ever. Um, I've seen it I've seen it in myself, you know? I struggled when I was younger trying to figure this whole game out. Um, and I see it in people all the time. But the truth is that when you lock in on your big five for life, it just changes something dramatic. You, you, you realize it's not as hard as you would think. And then once you experience even a small sample of it, you'd never go back. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's, I know that you love football. And so the first time you were out there on the pitch and you played and you experienced the joy of that, if someone told you, yeah, sorry, you can never do that again. You'd be like, what? <laughs> like, you would fight that, you know, you- I'll play tonight, so yeah, yeah, please. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you would find a way to make it part of your life. And that's what happens too, when people discover their big five for life and they start to experience it. Now, all of a sudden the movement and the momentum is propelling them forward. And that's what keeps them on target but they got to get there first. So, so there's also framework for bringing them in life, the, the big five for life? Yeah, totally. There's two aspects of it that are critical. One is, of course, as you mentioned, the process to discover your big five for life. So that takes you from, I don't know what I want to do with my life to I know with 100% certainty that these are the things that I most want to do to your experience. And then the second phase, as you alluded to, is, okay, what are the steps to actually implement this in your life? And there are very predictable uh, challenges, um, barriers that we've seen over the years with people. And so this phase of the experience that people go through is to help them overcome that. So help them implement the big five for life into their everyday reality. Isn't it selfish to concentrate so much on the big five for life, which are which hasn't, let's say, an, 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 an direct impact on your on your family or on your on your um, yeah, on the people which are around you? I'm so glad you asked that question because that is also one of the single greatest barriers for people. So let me just dispel the myth completely. First of all, I've never seen someone's big five for life, like the list of what is on their big five for life that does not have some element to it that involves other people. I've never seen it. In all decades of doing this work, I've never seen that. You're right, at the, at the essence of it, you'd be like, well, wait, these are the five things you most want to do to your experience. I can see where the uh, sort of the, the person who doesn't really believe in the goodness of others would be like, well, that's just selfish, right? But the truth is it's completely the opposite for the reason I just mentioned and for another huge reason. And that other huge reason is because when I see someone else living the life that they were destined to live, although I may never tell them, they will probably never know. Seeing them living their authentic life is what tells my unconscious mind, hey dude, it's okay if you actually live your authentic life too. That is why we are so inspired by biographies. Biographies show us the life of someone that we admire. And every day we have a chance to be a mini biography for someone else simply by living our big five for life. Yeah, it's a complete flip on that perspective. It really is. I really worked on On, on, on visions for the next, last 10, 15 years. So really used it a lot in my daily life. And what my experience is that sometimes miracles are happening, which at the end oh, you yeah. can explain, which don't seem to be miracles after they, they happen, but sometimes feels like you concentrate on something or you decided that this is a vision you want to have, a, a, um, 
a big fire for life you want to have and like a miracle what is behind that? Is that yeah. spirituality? What, what, what is behind that concept? Why is it happening so often? I call it the cosmic algorithm of the universe. And if you think about a Google al algorithm where you get on and you type in, you know, um, purple cows with pink polka dots, purple cows with pink polka dots, purple cows with pink polka dots, you know, after about the 50th time you type that in, Google is seeing that this is what this guy cares about, you know, and, and it could be anything. You could type in whatever you want. Uh, but it is going to look at your behavior and say, clearly this person is interested in this, we're going to give them more of this. And in my experience, there is a cosmic algorithm of the universe which operates in much the same way. Our actions indicate to the algorithm that this is what we're interested in. And so if I sit at my desk all day and I look at a computer screen at a job that I hate, I am sending the message to the algorithm that this is actually what I love when in truth, mm. I don't love it. The great news about this is that you can easily reactivate the algorithm to look at you differently, mm. and the obvious answer is do something different. So the miracle moment you're talking about, the random coincidence, either where someone connects with you unexpectedly or you notice something that you've never noticed before, happens because you activate the algorithm in the direction that you most want your life to go, and all of a sudden, all of these connection pieces start to happen because you activated the algorithm. So when someone knows their big five for life and it's, I want to go to Machu Picchu, for example, then it's not surprising that with that algorithm activated, then when you're sitting in the coffee shop and you're just flipping through the magazine and someone says, hey, is that Machu Picchu? You're like, yeah, it is. I'm thinking about going. Oh, you're gonna have a great time. I was there two months ago. Oh, well sit down, let's have a great conversation. Like that is the coincidence you're talking about. And it happens for entrepreneurs who are launching their businesses. It happens for people who have the love of travel. Every single Big Five for Life item I think I've ever seen has a story exactly what you're talking about with an unbelievable connection that follows once they activate the algorithm. Yeah, I can really say there were so many miracles in my life yeah. where I followed that concept really are straightforward and it always took a couple of months and then the miracle was happened. Yeah. Sometimes it was a bit more work that the miracle happened. Sometimes it was really like only yeah. uh, being confident that this happens and that the algorithm was, was on. I think there's an element to that too, which is the more times you see it, the more confident you become in it. And so you get less attached to the timeline because yeah. you know it's kicking in. And so mm. where exactly it will kick in, when it will exactly kick in, you don't know, but you have enough confidence from the victories that you've experienced yeah. along the way that you're like, it's gonna happen. Exactly, and I've done even another experience that even reaching that vision or fulfilling the big five for life is getting less important because the path mm. of following it is even so much joy yeah. that this is maybe an outcome, but the path is even more joyful. I can give you one example, like one vision for me was, uh, who was who, uh, we asked the question, who was the most inspirational speaker we want to have on our stage? And our answer was Barack Obama. Yeah. So we had the vision with the company, with the entire team, we want to get Obama on our stage. And he was there, which was really amazing and was, was a huge vision uh, realized in, in, in life. But I realized that the path to that, to that event, to that fulfillment was even much more yeah. exciting for the entire team because we grow as a team, we experience that visions really come true and all that. So yeah. the path was even much more powerful than the result itself. Yeah, you raised such a beautiful point in that, and this is something we actually talk about in the Big Five for Life discovery experience in the, in the do it process too, when someone's implementing in their life. And my own story associated with that is, uh, I think we've talked offline about this, but my dream was to make it as a professional beach volleyball player. And so I trained and trained and trained. I used to run 26 flights of stairs in the winter, up and down, up and down. And I was so intent on the championship that when I won my first championship, I remember distinctly my, it was a very close match. It was coming down to the end. I made a diving save on a ball. I turn around, I get up off the sand, my partner sets me, I leap up and I spike the ball, it hits the sand and we are now the champions. I've been training for years for this moment, right? And my buddy and I high five, we give each other a massive hug, we can't believe it. And then it's over. <laughs> it was like the victory is like so short. And in that I wanted to freeze time in that moment because I had trained so flipping hard for that moment. And that day changed my life completely for exactly the reasons you're talking about. Ever since then, 
I enjoyed every bit of the process of every other championship I ever won. And that, that's an evolution of thought that can only come from having that moment. Uh, so yeah, I'm so glad you raised that point. Because with travel, think about it. If there's a destination you wanna to go to, the fun doesn't start the minute you arrive on the plane. The fun starts the minute you start researching, reading about it, and telling your friends you're going. Yeah, enjoy the journey. Yeah. So I know that um, one goal was for you to bring the Big Five for life even more into the society, to yeah. the people. And uh, I know that the last weeks and months you did uh, huge steps to reach that goal. Can you tell us something more about it? Yeah, thanks in large part to you and your team and, and everybody at Greater. Uh, there were a bunch of factors going on that impacted my thinking around this. One was the fact that over the last couple of years, people have gotten super comfortable with technology in a way that they hadn't been before. Digital learning, online presences, And so this wasn't in play before. People didn't have that level of comfort, but they did now. And so that was one of the key variables for me. Another key variable was I've always wanted to introduce the Big Five for Life on as big a stage as possible to help as many people as possible. Uh, but you and I both know to do that kind of work effectively, you need a strong team that is working in sync with you because I have talents, but there are many things that I am not good at. <laughs> and so if this is going to happen on the scale that I wanted it to, I needed to be working with people who were unbelievably talented in their lane, in their expertise. And so I was delighted when you and I started talking about possibly working together to bring the Big Five for Life coaching and discovery process on a bigger platform. I will say the last variable associated with that is I notice more and more that people are struggling. Um, it's, there's so many distractions. You know, just your streaming channels alone, like, <laughs> right? I mean, there's about a gazillion and five things you could watch on your streaming channels, let alone the thousands of other distractions. And with all of that going on in life, people are really struggling, they're really hurting. So there's never been a time when the ability to focus on what matters most to you in your life has been more relevant. And I, I, I always remember this one story, it's a 17 year old kid I'd signed a book for her, her mom was at an event, I signed a book for her, and she wrote me this unbelievable letter. And I've shared the story a lot, but I'll share it again because it's one that so beautifully illustrates why I'm doing what we're doing now. This was a kid who, in this letter that she wrote me, said, I've been in and out of hospitals for two years, struggling with an eating disorder, trying to figure out life, trying to figure out my own life, trying to figure out my place in all of this. And after two years of being in and out of hospitals, nothing was working. I had lost hope, I was giving up. And then my mom gave me this copy of this book. And in a letter she said, and for the first time in a long time, I see a path. I see a path to actually living a life that I want to live. And Alex, there's lots of other 17 year olds out there that are feeling that and 25 year olds and 40 year olds and 60 year olds. We have the opportunity to get those people connected with what matters to them and live an extraordinary life. And that's what I'm excited about. So yeah, I think if we can get literally thousands of coaches out there who are helping people discover their big five for life, we can get tens of thousands of people out there discovering their big five for life and embracing all that that could be. It's a lot like what you were asking me about the big five for life and companies. These people can be inspiring themselves, live in an extraordinary life. They will inspire the people they live with to live an extraordinary life. And the ripple effect is unlimited. And that's a cool thing for the planet. This is why John Strelecki and Grader developed a big Five for Life coaching training. Um, and who wants to get more information about that, who wants to get inspired how you develop your big Five for Life for your own and how you develop skills also to support others to develop them, uh, I can invite you now for a free masterclass, for a free webinar underneath the video that has a chance to um, click on a link and register for that webinar and masterclass for free. Um, there you learn how you develop your Big Five for Life and also how to learn the skills to help others. Yeah, it's a great video series. I know because I was on camera doing it, we put together some great content, tons of tools, tips, techniques for living your Big Five for Life uh, and for the people who are interested in helping others discover and live theirs. And uh, so, yeah, I guarantee that everybody who watches that is gonna walk away with at least a few Wow, that is an awesome idea as far as living my Big Five for Life moments. What, is your, what are your Big Five Lives right now? Maybe what are the one, one two Big Five are you are most passionate about? 
Yeah, so I love to travel, as you know from our conversations. And so uh, over the last couple of years, that's been harder to do. And now I'm out there figuring out where do I want to go. I love traveling with my family, and that's a big piece of it. So I would say that's super high on my list. Um, this project is one of the things. So one of my big five for life is to inspire as many people as possible through the work that I do, whether it's my books, interviews like this, um, the big five for life coach certification training. And this project is one that has me excited, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's, uh, I see the impact. I see, again, that cascading effect. And I, you know, I have a kid who's 15 years old. I want her to grow up in a world that is better than the world I grew up in. And the more people we can inspire, the better chance that that's possible.